Hello, today we're going to be taking a look at the Holy Stone HS720G, which is a. Oh, I got that. Wow. Um, which is a gimbal drone that has optical flow, which is a cool piece of technology that lets you hover in place, looks, has cameras point at the ground, and detects movement. A lot of common higher end drones, starting, I believe, with the DJI Mini, uh, actually have this feature, which this directly competes with, um, in my opinion, of course. Um, so the DJI Mini uh, is kind of what this competes with. This does have a larger camera on it, which kind of puts it close to the Mini 2 territory around the same price. However, keep in mind also that this drone does not meet the 250 gram requirement. Uh, so you have to register with the FAA, which is one of the big selling points of the Mini. So uh, without further ado, uh, let's go through and uh, unbox it. So the first thing that I'm noticing is uh, we've got looks like a case that it comes with. I want to say like a fox leather case, which is uh, rather nice. Um, actually, I like this one a lot more than like some of the I don't know, like other cases that I've seen, like for um, for example the case that the Altel Nano came in. Um, so we've got a controller, we've got the drone itself, and we've got the extras. It looks like we've got some things in here too, like instructions and um, things like that. Yeah, it says cautions of battery. Okay. So, we've got a cool case. Keep that in mind there. So, what do we have in here? Um, well, actually, let's first take a look at the drone. So, those are our fancy optical flow sensors on the bottom here. Uh, I would assume so, at least. And those are to keep uh, the ground visible. So, and you know for positioning so let's pop the sucker out see what we got so they made the design choice of having all the landing gear on the main body rather than the individual arms which is interesting and then also we can pop this off and take a look at the gimbal which also looks rather nice so one of the things i also will point out at least about holy stone is that um when you start getting into like the 300 dollar drone area or drone market um, a lot of companies end up copying other companies' drones or using the same or just rebranding them. Um, I was not able to find anything that this closely relates to. None of Holy Stone's other drones, while they are cheaper, they don't seem to copy anything else. Uh, for example, the, uh, oh boy, uh, SJRC F11, which is something I got off of Wish, has a direct copy from like the Suco something F11. So there's just like an F11 series. Also, you've got smart batteries, which basically means it tells you the charge, as well as USB-C charging directly on the battery, which is actually an added plus. Um, my only concern, though, of course, is that um, there should have been more, uh, given this price point. So um, you have an option for a memory card on the side here. So looks like that fits nicely is there as well. You can have, have a memory card over there. So let's put the battery in. I don't know how I feel about the landing gear being in that position. We'll have to see how well it flies. Um, batteries are required for the controller. So, and then you have a GPS on and off switch, which my opinion, um, a lot of the more expensive drones don't even let you do that. So I, that can be a good or a bad thing. You can accidentally hit it. That does seem kind of like a place that might get hit. So, um, yeah, I guess the next logical thing is going to be to go let it fly. Um, interestingly, though, I don't know if there is actually any antennas in here. Sometimes they just put these uh, antennas on here, and they don't actually do anything, which is kind of funny. I think they're good there. Um, get the... Pop out the phone holder. And uh, handle controls here. And uh, put my phone in there, and uh, we'll give it a flight. So, uh, I've gone out, flown a little bit. Um, for me, I focused a lot more on low level flying because it's something that I more enjoy doing. Uh, higher level stuff is rather easy for drones to do. You can, if you're flying at like 100 feet in the air, uh, you're not, depending on like, you know, your tree level and stuff, you're not particularly noticing as much of the minute details of flight. Um, whereas when I'm flying, um, 
especially since the main feature of this drone is advertised to be optical flow, uh, I thought I'd test it out heavily. Uh, so fly only, you know, below 10 feet pretty much uh, to see how steady it is. If you look at any of the uh, tele drones or DJI drones, um, they take advantage of this um, by using their optical flow and they stay relatively steady. Um, in high wind scenarios, they might dodge and weave a little bit. Um, and with this drone, I found the optical flow to be completely unreliable. Um, honestly, it could be a software issue, um, but I had, if you had told, if you had not told me there was optical flow in here, I would have no idea and I would be assuming this is a GPS drone. But the fact that, you know, I have GPS on, I have the optical flow on, the optical flow is supposed to be on. I've contacted the manufacturer and they said it's supposed to be on and it should be working. Um, and my notice, you know, my tests and stuff, that it's, it's drifting quite a good bit. I, quite honestly, it's, it's not particularly usable at low flight levels, which is something that I personally like to fly a lot at. Um, and overall, I mean, the, f it's a fast drone. It's a, it's a really good drone in the sense that like once it's flying and, you know, you let off the controls, my personal preference is for it to try to come to a stop and it does that. Um, but the problem with that is I'm afraid to like, let it like fly, you know, far away from the trees or whatever, um, you know, out of, you know, fly it away. Uh, and I'm afraid that when I let go of the controls, yes, it may try to stop, but it's not going to stay in the same position. And I had multiple times where it just kept drifting towards an object. It's supposed to have optical flow on, and it doesn't. So overall, like ergonomics wise, the controller for what you're paying for is not particularly the worst. Um, but I mean, that's just the most frustrating part about it. And now let's talk about video. The video quality on this has to have some reasonable expectations. Um, I think mainly though you have to understand this is a $300 drone and for the price the quality is not going to be great. That being said, um, I have drones that are 1080p that have quality that is on par with this. I don't know if my expectations were just too high. But for me, uh, this drone is almost indistinguishable from um, what the SJRC um, F11 um, does. Um, and that comes with three batteries. Uh, honestly, the picture quality is the same. The video quality is the same. Um, the robustness of that drone is even better. Actually, let me go get it. So this drone has been crashed um, and repaired quite the number of times. But in my opinion, um, you get more batteries with this. These batteries are a USB generation. I think they're whatever the smaller USB, I forget the name of it at the top of my head, but you get three of those batteries. And I honestly find it difficult to justify getting a drone with one battery. Um, yes, the control is a little bit nice, but the the optical flow doesn't really appear to be doing anything. And no matter how I configure the settings, it keeps on drifting. So, I mean, at that point, why basically you're losing out on your batteries to have a feature that doesn't even work um, in comparison to like a drone that doesn't have optical flow, pretty much flies the exact same, yet you can get more fly time out of it, more fun out of it for the same price. So in practicality, I mean, yes, both of these drones this is supposed to have 4K, but like, I, I can't, I can't really justify it. Yeah, just mostly frustrating is... I don't know if my expectations were just too high, or is this just just does not seem to live up to what it's advertising. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you had a good day and uh, check out the channel for other cool tech related news reviews and videos. So it turns out that the drone that I got had some problems with it. I went back and forth, reached out to the company and I said, hey, I'm having issues getting the uh, optical flow to work properly. So in that time instead, I uh, they sent me out another one. 
Um, and I've actually was testing this one earlier just to make sure that uh, something was noticeably different and it was. So this one actually flies substantially better indoors. Um, so that has a couple things we need to talk about still though. Um, this one, at least on the manual, or sorry, these drones in general, in the manual say that there's certain conditions that you should be flying it in. That is, that you have to have over like, you can't have it over like reflective or flat surfaces that are, like there's a long list of things that you need to make sure you don't do uh, if you want the optical flow to work. And uh, for me, especially in comparison to some of the higher end drones that I'm used to flying, uh, they really don't have that big of an issue with it. So I find it interesting. I mean, maybe the fact that it's the sensor on the bottom here is uh, kind of small. Um, the best way to describe it is it flies really good. It flies awesome, actually. In fact, hovering indoors, it does actually really good. The flight, when it's connected to GPS, is actually really good. Um, so I do have some comments about the way that the algorithm is set up for the Honestly, there is some questionable choices in the flight controller. Um, the main one is the optical flow only turns on when it has zero GPS satellites and the GPS is off, which basically means you're flying it indoors. I don't know how many people actually fly their drones indoors, and especially if you're flying something like this, and that's what it says, it's supposed to be for indoors when you have the optical flow on, um, you'd probably want some type of protection on the blades and stuff too. So if they're trying to market it as a fly indoors drone, that's great. Put some like blade covers, or at least come with some blade covers. They shouldn't be too cheap. They're just pieces of plastic. Um, also, not using the optical flow when you have zero satellites and you have the GPS turned on is a questionable choice, as well as not using the optical flow when you're below a certain height, especially because you're outdoors. You'd want to use the optical flow outdoors at low altitudes because it's bright outside it shouldn't be that difficult to do um but i think the problem is in my opinion i feel like it was uh how do i say this a poor design choice to bother to not even bother to implement optical flow when there are gps satellites because um my one of my favorite things is not to fly super high up in the sky but rather fly through trees and stuff with this drone the transition from flying you know taking off to flying or flying indoors rather uh, cumbersome and tedious and difficult. Um, I feel like if you have an open field, that's great, but not everyone has a big open field that they can fly their drone or take their drone off from. And, uh, I mean, well, yes, you shouldn't be flying near anything when you're flying with your GPS. You still should, you know, be able to take off and, you know, maybe like a 30, you know, 20 meter clearing you should still be able to take off. Um, so I feel like the optical flow implementation should have been done below the altitude. And uh, this doesn't strike me as the kind of drone that has the software updating, uh, the ability to update the software. So honestly, to me, it feels like a lot of the features that you find in a DJI drone, or when the drone takes off and it's using its optical flow till it gets a GPS lock and won't fly above a certain level until it gets a full GPS lock, um, was kind of just skipped out here and they just chose to only use optical flow in a very specific part, which was flying indoors with the GPS off, which, you know, you put the sensor in there and you only, like, that's it's unused 90% of the time. So, um, that's that. So some other things I want to point out is the camera on here. Um, I still stand by my words that this camera definitely feels like a 1080p camera. Um, I know, likely, it may have the 4K, uh, like, be a physical 4K sensor, but in my opinion, I think it's pr probably because it is way, way too small of... Um, I want to say like they, they probably should have just made the lens bigger or something because it's just probably not getting enough light. Um, also, mine did come with like some scratches up here, so I don't know what, what those were, but maybe it's just dust or something. I have no idea. But basically, that's the uh, drone there, and the the camera on there is nice, except for the fact, of course, that you know it's not the best of quality. Battery life on here was rather good in my experiences though, but I did have one battery fail on me, so um, like just fail as in like it just wouldn't hold a charge at all um and the amount of issues that this dro the first drone had it took a long time i want to thank them though for at least putting up with me and troubleshooting and going back and forth with me but i definitely feel like the the first drone definitely had problems so if you have problems with yours which i like to explain that i did have problems so that people know uh just contact them and get a replacement or whatever because especially if it involves the optical flow that was my experience defects do happen they happen quite a lot in manufacturing and it's more the customer service. And then also keep in mind I am the YouTuber. 
and who knows what the customer's experience will be as well. However, one they sent me one working one and one not working one, and it's not a super expensive drone, so I would assume the experience is rather good. Um, so next question to ask yourself is uh, whether or not you should buy it. Um, so the c similar price things you're looking at is maybe the original DJI uh, Mini, the DJI Mini 2, and maybe some of, I saw some husband drones with some optical uh, avoidance on there even now. And then you have the DJI uh, 3 Pro, which has the optical avoidance on there as well. So all of those are right around, they start the lowest one, the DJI Mini 1, you could probably get for about $300 which is this is what you're competing with. That has a 2.75 or 2.7K sensor on it. Um, this has a full 4K sensor on it. Um, while I don't actually have this, the first DJI Mini um, to compare it with, um, the flight controller I would assume is very similar to the, the standard DJI ones of my other Mini drones. So uh, I would assume that that is probably not the, the flight control on there, especially like I would recommend you look at YouTube videos because I'm not the one that should be making that comparison because I don't have the Mini to compare it directly to. Um, so that would be someone that you would forward you on to someone else that actually has a full-fledged review. But that's probably the major competition. And I have the flight controller on this compared to my other DJI drones is having the optical flow only take, take advantage in very cir certain circumstances is very, uh, I want to say as I said, a very poor design choice and I feel like that's not the case for DJI. So if you, that's something you want to do which is fly low to the ground or fly indoors or just have, well I mean indoors this is fine too. I would say this quality of this optical flow sensor is also not the best. So, but it does look like from, you know, just my research as well that the Mini, the original Mini also uses a similar sensor setup. So honestly you should make the decision about the flight controller from you know, other people there. In comparison to some of the $500 and higher up drones, this is obviously a cheaper drone substantially. Um, so you get what you pay for, I guess. Overall though, the sensor on there, I still don't think is really good. But then again, you can't really expect much for the price range. Um, it's, in my opinion, not something I could use on this channel. Uh, and I feel like it's definitely 1080p. If it's a really bright day, which it was, um, then yeah, I think there's some things to consider there as well. Also, additionally, when I was flying this one, I did notice when, uh, in certain circumstances when I was flying it high, the camera looked like it juddered a lot, like uh, jitter, juddered, whatever you want to call it, and it basically like racket, rapidly adjusted, and it caused the video to kind of shake a lot, which I know this is a gimbal and you're trying to prevent shaking, but it definitely did have a lot of shaking, which is something else to consider there as well. Um, I felt like there might, there really, it felt like, what I've seen so far shows that this was kind of rushed and in the fact that that camera issues were prevalent in both drones especially when it was like in a bright day um, just keep in mind you have to probably do slow steady movements and any quick movements um, will create kind of that juddery video which is not really usable so in conclusion um, that's the Holy Stone HS720 and honestly in my opinion uh, whether or not you should buy it it depends on probably how much you like the DJI drone and wh whether or not you want to pay for the DJI drone in comparison. Like you could get um, the Mini probably for around the same price with probably more batteries and you could probably get like used probably and you could get the Mini 2 which is probably people are selling it pretty cheap too. Um, you could probably pay $100 and get the Mini 2 which also might which has probably better video and the flight controller in my opinion is a little bit better so it's a cool drone all drones are cool but i just think that the features this should really in my opinion to make it be 100 percent recommendable probably should be a 200 dollar drone a 250 dollar drone which is not probably doable um i know from like a material standpoint this is probably pretty expensive but i just feel like the problem is the software is the biggest contributing factor here um, I mean, the light, the camera on here is bad, but not like, but with it, I mean, within the price range, it's, it's okay, understandable. I just feel like the software on here is really lacking. Be prepared to have lots of quirks if you've flown similar drones in a similar price point to fly this one because this one has lots of quirks. And honestly, I think the, the optical flow usage is flat out stupid. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. Have a good day and uh, we'll see you guys next time.